Hello there, sixth graders. It's Friday. Oh, thank heavens it's Friday. Listen, uh, our lesson today is 13.4. But let me just uh, let me just shout out a hi to Mohammed, Abdel, Cameron, and Leia. Layla, how are y'all doing? This uh, this lesson, eh, you know, things are starting to get a little little more interesting here. Uh, lesson 13.4 is dealing with variability, which is how we look at data sometimes to see what the variances are between maybe within that set of data or in comparing uh, a couple sets of data against one another. Last lesson we talked about the mean absolute deviation. And we learned that in order to find the mean, which is like the average, you take all your numbers in your number set, add them together, divide it by the amount of numbers there are, and that gives you your mean. And that point then uh, helps you determine the deviation between the points, the data points, as they're put on a dot plot. You count the spaces left and right of that mean deviation. You take each one of those, add them all together, divide it by the number of pieces of data you have, and that gives you your deviation. We also talked about you know box plots, which was a little bit different approach because in order to set up your box plot, you had to find the median. And that was, out of your number set, the number or the data point that's right in the middle. And then you find, to the left of that point, the median, and that's your lower quartile. And to the right of that point, the median becomes its upper quartile. Anyhow, all of those things are piling up on top of each other now as we start looking at variability. And the first thing that they uh, ask you to do, this lesson starts on 725. And, you know, you're really going to have to chew on this. I, I picked the problem, and I worked the problem, and I got a different answer than what was in the answer book. And I'm sitting there thinking, am I really getting this wrong? And I've worked it and worked it and reworked it and reworked it. I, I probably spent an hour on that one problem trying to figure out what mistake I was making. I wasn't making a mistake. The answer book was wrong. And boy, I'll tell you what, you know, nothing, nothing irritates me more than when the answer in the answer book is wrong and I can't, uh, I can't check my work with any reliability. But anyhow, uh, we're going to work that problem. I spent way too much time on it than to just ignore it. But anyhow, starting on 725, it's asking you to find a mean absolute deviation. And it gives you what the mean is. There's a, there's a data set there, a table. And it gives you a data value. It tells you what the mean is. And all you do is subtract the larger number from the smaller number. Take all those numbers that you produce in the third box of that table, add them together, and then divide it by the number of data points that you were provided with. And there looks like there were six of them. So once you get your deviation, once you understand what those numbers are and put them in, it's 12, by the way, you're going to divide that by six. So it just tells you that your mean absolute deviation for that data set is two. Now this is where it starts getting interesting. I uh, I want to direct you to page 726 and the example they give you there they show you a, it's a comparison again uh, between uh, two stores, store A and store B and it's actually the price in dollars of uh, handheld game players at two different electronic stores. 
So you're going to find the range, the inner quartile range for each of these data sets, then compare the variability of the prices of the game players at the store to uh, uh, at the two stores. So when you look at these two box plots there, you see that there are numbers, there are points to find. And what they've given you is they've given you the least value, the highest value. That's a range. And then within the box plot, it gives you the lower and upper quartiles. So you can actually glean some information from those. So looking at store A, calculating the range, you're going to find the difference between the greatest and the least number. So if you look at the range, it's 150 to 20, 24 to 150. That's the range. The cheapest is 24, the most expensive is 150. And in order to find, to, to define what that range is, you take the 150, subtract the 24 from it, and that will give you 126. So, between 24 and 150, is 126. That's the range. It ranges 126 intervals between 24 and 150. That's how you define range. And for store B, you're looking at the, uh, the difference there would be between 120 and 30, which would be means the range is 90. So now we know how to get and state the range. Now the inner quartile range, again, you're looking at your lower quartile and your upper quartile. Those numbers are given to you and you just subtract the smaller number from the larger number. So the inner quartile range for store A is going to be 72 minus 48 and for store B it's going to be 100 minus 42. And there you have it. So it's then telling you that the interquartile range is 24 for store A, and the range is 58 in store B. So to answer their question, so store A has a higher, if you look at it, it has a, store A has a higher range. Its range is 126 versus store B's 90. But when you look at the inner quartile range, store B has a higher range. So it has a greater inner quartile range. If your brains are going, going like that right now, I totally understand. This is one of those kind of lessons where you're better served to be in the classroom where you can throw wadded up pieces of paper at the teacher for making you have to learn this stuff. I chose problem number two on 727 to be our first one. Now, what it's telling you there is find the mean absolute deviation of a data set. Okay, so that's like going back a lesson. Find the mean absolute deviation on a data set. And that data set, again, the first thing you got to do is line up your numbers from least to greatest. And so the numbers from least to greatest in problem number two are going to be 16, and then a 17, another 17, an 18, three times. So there are three 18s, and then two 20s. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight data points and they are in order from least to greatest. So the first thing I do when I get a problem like this is I'm going to add all them numbers together. Why do I add them all together? Because I want to know what my mean is. I want to know what the average is. So I add them all together. When I add them all together, they equal 144. 
And remember, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of those. So in order to get our mean, we're going to divide it by eight. And so our mean is going to be 18. Let me put that up here. 18 is our mean. Everybody got that so far? Get those calculators out. And remember, you can, you can look at this more than once. Now, then the next thing I'm going to do with this, after I've gotten my mean, is I'm going to look at it and I'm going to say, okay, what's the median? I just want to know this stuff because, you know, you never know when you're going to use it. So we got 10 numbers, right? Or, I'm sorry, eight numbers. That's an even number. So that means you got to go to the two middle numbers, right? The two middle numbers, add those together, 18 plus 18, that's 36. And then you're going to divide that by 2. So that means your median, your median is also going to be 18. So we'll put that up there. So now we've got a mean and a median. Now we can go ahead and we can build our plot. And we're going to go from 16 to 20. So there's 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. All right, that covers our range. Remember, our range goes from 16 to 20 in order. So, that's from least to greatest. So now that we have that, let's put in what we've got in the way of data here. So, let's build a dot plot. We got 116, we got two 17s, we got three 18s, and then we've got two 20s. Everybody with me so far? Now, we know that 18, I'm going to do a different color here, just so you can see the contrast. That is our median, it's also our mode, or I'm sorry, uh, mean. So 18 is the point that everything else is going to work off. Now, what was it asking us to do? Find the absolute deviation for the data set. So the absolute deviation What we need to do is figure out, using our data points, what our deviation is going to be. So 18 is our median. So let's start over here at 16. 16 is 1, 2. Two places away. 17 is one place away, but there are two. So it's plus 1, plus 1, and then at 18 we've got plus 0, plus 0, plus 0, because those three points are at 18, and then 20 is 1, 2, so plus 2 and plus 2. And then we're going to divide that whole thing by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Everybody with me so far? All right, so we got 2, 3, 4, 6, 8. So our answer to this is 8 over 8, which, as we all know, equals 1. And that's your mean 
deviation. One. See how easy that was? <laughs> yeah, right. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling you guys. I'm feeling you. All right, that was problem number two. I'm going to work one more problem for you because this is the one that had me stumped for about an hour because the darn answer book was wrong. It had the wrong answer. And I chose this problem because if you can do this problem, you can do all the problems. It's problem number eight on 727. Or actually, before we do that one, let's do problem number four. It gives you a box plot. You see it off to the right. Now, it doesn't give you any values, so you've got to look at the number line, and you've got to assign values to each one of those dots. So the first dot, the furthest one on the left, is 32. The lower quartile range dot there is 20, I'm sorry, 36. 42 is your median. 52 is your upper quartile. And then the last dot is 56. And so what's the first question they ask you? Looking at that, what is the range of the data? Well, the lowest data is 32, the greatest is 56. So all you're going to do is take 56, subtract 32 from it. So your range is 24. Everybody got that? You just subtract the highest from the low, or lowest from the highest, and that gives you the range. Now it wants to know what the inner quartile range is. Well, we know our quartiles are 36 and 52. Same thing. 52 minus 36, that's 6. So your inner quartile range is 16. This is not as confusing as it seems. So when you're figuring ranges, you're just subtracting the lowest from the highest. That answer is the answer to what your range is. Now, let's get into this beefy problem down here for you. Number eight, we have a data set there. And what it is, it's the cost of dog food. And there are, if I remember, 10 numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10 numbers. Now, like any of them, you've got, to, you've got to take those numbers and put them in order from the least to the greatest. So, let's just go ahead and do that. And we'll run through the same steps that we did on an earlier problem. So, it starts with 16. Next number is 18. Then we've got 20 four times. Remember, you got to put every number. Then there's two 24s, one 26, four 30s, one 26, and finally 32. Now, bear in mind, I'm going to put that right here so that we don't forget. We're talking about money. So there's our number set. So let's work through it, and let's figure out what is what. The first thing I'm going to do is add them all together and divide it by 10. And that's going to give me my mean. And the total is 220, and there are 10. So, using base 10 rule, get rid of the 10, get rid of the 10. 22. So our... Our mean is 22. Now, just for practice, let's get the median. Now, there's 10 numbers. So that means you got to go to the two middle numbers. And those two middle numbers are right here. Two 20s. You add those together, that's 40. 
divide it by how many of them there are, 2. So that means your median is 20. The mean and the medium are not hardly ever the same. They're usually different. So that's why we have a mean and a median. Okay, so now, what is this problem asking us to do? The chart shows the price of different varieties of dog food at a pet store. Find the range, the interquartile range, and the mean absolute deviation. This problem is going to rack your brain. But when you get it, you'll get it. You'll, you'll be able to do any of these problems. So let's, first of all, do the range. And the range is between 16 and 32. Do you see that? The lowest price is $16, the highest price is 32. So in order to find and to find a range, you take your 32, subtract 16. Your range is 16. So we'll put that over here. Range equals 16 and that's sixteen dollars by the way we're talking money here don't lose sight of that all right so now we've got the range what's the next thing it wants us to figure out the interquartile range now how do we figure out the interquartile range well it goes back a little ways right to find the upper and lower quartile, you need the median. And the median is 20. So let's start by making a number line. And we're going to start at 16, and we're going to end at 32. So we got 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, and 32. That's a long number line. All right, so now we got our number line. So we're going to figure the upper quartile and lower quartile. We need our median. Our median is 20. So our median is 20. Let's mark that median. And our mean, I'm going to do that with a dotted line. is 22. Everybody understands the difference between the mean and the median. Now, in order to get the upper and lower quartile, we're going to go left and right of the median, and we're going to find the median of the numbers that are left and the numbers that are right. So we've got 16, 17, 18, 19. There are four numbers there. Again, even. So we're going to take the two middle ones. 17 plus 18 equals 35. So the lower quartile is going to be 35 divided by 2, which is 17.5. Now we're going to come up to our number line. We're going to put a, put a dot right between 17 and 18 because 17.5 is our lower quartile. Now, between 20 and 32, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 numbers. And even one again. So that means we got to go to the 2 in the middle. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All right. 
So there's 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 26 and 27, so we got 26 plus 27, which equals 53. And so 26 and a half is our upper quartile. So we're going to come up here. We're going to make a dot right at 26 and a half. So now, if we want, we can we can make a box plot out of this if you want to go ahead and do that. It's just a matter of taking this like so and making the box. But what we're looking for is the answer to the inner quartile range. So here are our two quartiles. This one is 17.5 and 26.5. And in order to get the range, you're going to take 26.5 minus 17.5, and that's going to be 9. So your inner quartile range the inner quartile range, the difference between the two quartiles is going to be 9. So let's put that up there. Inner quartile range is 9. Our range is, we decided it was 16, the difference between 32 and 16, the lowest and the highest point. Now it wants us to figure out one more thing here. And that is the mean absolute deviation. And for the mean absolute deviation, we got to go back to the mean. And the mean is right here, 22. So now we're going to go left and right. But let's put our data into our chart here. We've got 116. we got 118. We've got four 20s. And a 24, twice, 26, once, and 32 once. All right, so now we've got our data on our line here. We're going to go to the median, which is 22. And we're going to start figuring out what our deviation is. So from 22 to 20 is 1, 2. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4. So we're going to have four twos. 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. 18 is 4 away. And we have 1, 4. So there's 1, 4. And then... 16 would be 6 away, so it's plus 6. That takes care of the lower side. Now let's look at the upper side. Between 22 and 24 is 1, 2, and we've got two of those. So plus 2, plus 2. Come over to 26, which is 1, 2, 3, 4 away. We've got plus 4. And then between 22 and 32, we've got a plus 10. Now, we're going to add all them numbers together. And we're going to divide it by however many numbers there are, and there are 10 of them. So, this total of those numbers is 36. So, we've got 36 over 10. So now when you divide, I'll do it right here, 36 by 10 goes in there three times. We need to put a zero. So we got six, bring down the zero. 10 goes into 60, 
Don't forget your decimal point. Six times. And because this is money, it's $3.60. And that's the deviation. $3.60. So in that problem, we determine, I mean, look at this board. What have you got? I, I, you guys are, I'm sure you're pulling your hair out. But if you just go through it systematically, like I just did here, you'll get the answer. We determined that the range between 16 and 32 is 16, and the interquartile range between 26.5 and 17.5 is 9. And then by counting off the deviations in our data set, we discovered that the deviation is 360. So these numbers then, put in your decimal point, because we're going to turn it into money. So we got $9, $16, and $3.60. And that is all we're going to do today, because you got all weekend to try and figure this out. Uh, I can just see y'all going, oh, man. But it isn't really all that tough. And next week, we'll do a little review for a mid-chapter uh, review. And we'll move on from there. Meanwhile, I know it's going to be a rainy weekend. But try to make the best of it. And as always, stay safe. Stay out of trouble. Especially you sixth graders. And we'll see you Monday. Okay? Have a nice weekend.